I figured out how to create an AI generated interview style podcast automatically. Sorry for the long delay since my last video, but uh, life. So it's been a little while since I have created a new bot. Uh, I'm really excited about this one uh, because it works seamlessly. It is an interview style back and forth between two people podcast AI generated and then turned into an audio file that you can post anywhere. Let me show you how I built it. So the first part of this uh, bot is the flow that generates the voices. Now I start with perplexity AI. Uh, this is context. This is uh, to look into the topic, right? So basically I give it a topic and then I let it run to the internet. I use one of the online uh, models and uh, gather as much information as possible um, for that topic. And that is context that I give to Claude, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I really like the way it writes. Um, so then I instruct it, say, here's the topic, and here is more context on that topic. Write um, a podcast dialogue between these two characters. Um, it should last about 10 minutes. Here's the thing. I've tried it with several different prompts, and unfortunately, I can only ever get it to produce about five minutes worth of dialogue. I think just based on the fact that it's consistently like that, um, this is a, just a limitation of the way uh, Anthropic Claude's output is uh, designed. So if you want to do a real full episode, uh, what you would have to do is, um, all right, first let me explain. The output is an HTML table with two columns. Column one is all the dialogue for uh, person one. Column two is all the dialogue for person two. Um, so uh, you just want that HTML table to be as big as, as you need it to be. So what you might do is do several different instances of Claude uh, where you break the topic down uh, into maybe four parts, and then you say, all right, write a dialogue about this, and then it gives you five minutes worth of dialogue, and then, okay, now write a dialogue about this, et cetera, et cetera, and then put all of that into the same HTML table and uh, that makes the conversation longer. This is very similar to how I do blogs, right? So the blog is split up beginning, middle, end, or split up into like a six part uh, outline. Same thing, you would just do that here. While we're on the topic of modifications, notice that I do have this connected to perplexity so that perplexity can do the research. But if you're in a niche and you have a vector database with a bunch of knowledge, this is also where you would want to connect a vector database call uh, instead of perplexity. So that way the podcast can be on some very, very specific niche information. So let me break that down again. Information goes here, whether that's online or whether that's from your database. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a vector database. You could pull information from a standard database, Postgres or MySQL, whatever. Um, but you get the information here. That's the context. And then you give it to AI. You can break it down into a bigger outline and then do each section so that you have it long enough. Um, that's fine too, but you have AI spit out uh, dialogue, a conversation on the topic between two characters, and that goes into an HTML table with person one's dialogue in column one and person two's dialogue in column two. Now, then we have a router here, and the reason why we don't actually use this iterator for anything other than the fact that we have to know how many bundles there are because we don't know how long this dialogue is going to be. So we have to know how big this table is. How we figure out how big this table is is using the iterator, and then we'll have a total number of bundles um, variable, which we set here, and then we get it down here. Uh, because otherwise it'll run all for every bundle it'll run. That's the reason why this ran 11 times and you don't want that to happen with Your voices you don't need 11 sets of the same conversation. So You have that number you need that number that number is how many times it gets repeated and Then you do column one column two person one person two over and over again uh, and that's essentially what this part does so in here, I'm using OpenAI's Generate and Audio. Um, the voices are okay. Um, you may prefer using 11 Labs. You can use whatever voice generator you want. But essentially how it works is, 
person one's voice goes up here, person two's voice goes down here, and it rotates. And the reason why it does that is so that you have each part of the dialogue one after the other. And they get saved to a database, a data store, which I'll show you um, right here. But real quick, pdf.co, what is that? You can use Cloud Convert to convert the file into a URL. But you won't be able to do this with the free account because Cloud Convert limits um, to 10 transformations per day. Um, so you'd have to buy credits. I'm using pdf.co because pdf.co has um, the ability to upload a file and get a temporary URL. And I have a ton of credits with them. It's not free either. Uh, you can also put this stuff into uh, your Google Drive in a file. Uh, you would upload the file, and then you'd have to put like an iterator and uh, set up like a naming convention so that you could easily search for the name of the file because you'd have to search the file and then download the file. And then you'd have it for free, but I have a ton of credits for pdf.co, so that's why I'm using those. And all that's doing is turning the file into a URL. Anyway, these are what generates the, um, the voices. I'm using Alloy and uh, Onyx for these, uh, person one, person two. And then the data store is where it gets uh, saved. Uh, this is the data store. This is what it looks like. There's nothing in it, but essentially uh, it's, it's really simple, right? The key is whatever. That's not an important thing. And then speaker is the URL of the, of the file, right? So it'll just be a list of URLs where all of the audio files live. And, and that becomes important in the next uh, scenario. So we have this generates all of the voices. Then we have this. And this is where the it's, it's all turned into a file that you can then use. So how I have this set up is search records, and it just searches all the records from that table. Uh, and then the increment function uh, is necessary to name the files and transload it, which is what we're going to use to stitch all of the audio files together. Uh, and then I have the text aggregator. So this actually generates a, a portion of the JSON. Right? So this is repeated over and over again, import audio one, two, three, however many times uh, there are records in here. Um, and then it aggregates it all into a block of text. Then we do the exact same thing for a, the second portion of um, the JSON. Right? There are two portions, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this generates the first, this generates the second. Um, set variable here we actually have to get the length of this part and the reason is because every uh every time this line repeats there'll be a comma at the end but the very last comma doesn't need to be there so we have to remove that so we get the length of that particular bundle and then in the transloaded api call uh, you see here it's set up steps and then this is the first uh, bundle that I created over here and then concatenated and this is the second bundle that I created uh, and then I got the length and then I did a substring start with zero and end with uh, taking off the last character so we removed that last comma and that way the um, the JSON comes out perfect for the API call that makes an API call to transload it, which basically just takes all of those audio files and stitches them together into one big file. Uh, and then we grab that, we sleep for 60 seconds to give it time to process, and then we make a call to fetch the resulting uh, file. And then we grab that resulting file, and then we put it in make so that we can use it later. Uh, you can, and this is where you can do whatever with it, right? You can send it to Instagram, to Facebook, to LinkedIn. I'm currently just putting it in my Google Drive, and then I delete all records. And the reason is because the next time this runs, if it uses the same names, which it will, because that's how it's set up, uh, if there is a duplicate record or a duplicate name, uh, it'll it'll fail. So I I wipe out the the table so that it can the database so that it can uh, start over again. And that is how it works. Now let me show you that in action.
Hey there, McPhee. Today, we're diving into a topic that's been buzzing around the business world lately, AI business automations. What's your take on this tech trend? Oh, Lobos, it's a game changer. AI business automations are revolutionizing how companies operate. It's all about using artificial intelligence to streamline processes and boost efficiency. Have you seen any examples in action? Actually, I have. Just the other day, I was chatting with a customer service bot for my internet provider. It was surprisingly helpful and solved my issue without me ever talking to a human. Is that the kind of thing we're talking about? Exactly. That's a perfect example of AI automation in customer service. These chatbots use something called natural language processing, or NLP, to understand and respond to human language. But it goes way beyond just customer service. Interesting. What other areas of business are being impacted by AI automations? Well, it's pretty widespread. We're seeing AI make waves in marketing, finance, operations, and even in sales. For instance, AI can analyze customer data to personalize marketing campaigns or predict sales outcomes. In finance, it's automating tasks like invoicing and expense tracking. Wow, that's impressive. But I've got to ask McPhee, with all this automation, are we looking at a future where humans are out of jobs? That's a common concern, Lobos, but it's not quite that simple. 